My life is full and I'm very blessed. I have a loving husband, I have a wonderful teenage son, I work full time, I YouTube, and I also have hobbies outside of these things. I want to share with you my frugal minimal journey going forward. Here on YouTube, I'm known as the frugal minimalist. And that's not to say that I know everything or that I'm even there. This name is my goal to becoming more frugal and minimal. And hopefully throughout this journey, I'll help a few people along the way as well. In this video, I'm going to share with you some things that may not look frugal or may not look minimal. And usually for my perfectionist self, that's a really big issue. But this is part of my journey, so I'm going to be okay with that. I am a huge fan of Marie Kondo. She was the impetus behind my whole minimalism journey back in 2017. And I was instantly drawn to her. She's so tiny and cute, and she looks just like I sound. I followed much of her technique, and I streamlined a lot of my belongings. My husband and son even followed suit and decluttered a lot of their belongings as well. But things still felt off to me, and they still do feel off. I still feel that we have too much disorder, too much stuff, just too much. I also have trouble living my everyday life and sustaining the order that I had right after tidying up. Enter the Japanese concept called Kaizen. And before I talk about what Kaizen is, I want to show you an example. This kitchen drawer shows you where Marie Kondo got me after the initial run. It looks tidy, but as my family and I use it, nothing ever gets put back in the same way, and the tools just get placed back haphazardly until this happens. Everything's out of order, and honestly, I'm really annoyed at this point. And even though I know it's wrong, that sets a tone for my mood. I have to spend time reorganizing everything, but it still doesn't look like what it did when I started. Now, every time anyone needs anything from this drawer, they have to visually read all of the utensils before finding the one that they need. This is that same drawer after applying Kaizen to it. Now each item has a defined home, and whoever puts the utensils back will be able to put them away in the same exact location every time. There is so much calm and peace from this drawer now. And this is not to say that my whole house is Pinterest worthy. Just look at some of the disorder that I have in my house. This is a pile of items that I have from a decluttering video that I made three months ago, and I still haven't brought them to the donation center. This is my pantry. This is a bed sheet that I have balled up after doing laundry many months ago. It's here because many months ago, somebody requested a video on that and needless to say, I never got around to making that video. This is where I think Kaizen will help me and I hope that it will help you as well. My husband introduced Kaizen to me. It's something that his work implements. Kaizen, like Marie, originates from Japan. It is made up of two characters, Kai, which means continuous, and Zen, which means change. Together, meaning continuous change. The idea behind this is that you make small incremental changes every day. The thing that drew me into Kaizen is that the journey to this substantial improvement is calm, pleasurable, and sustainable. As I researched this further, I discovered that large corporations like Toyota, Amazon, and Porsche embrace this concept. This in the world of manufacturing is called lean. They focus on being lean in order to reduce the waste, improve quality, and increase productivity and profits. It is only through the byproduct of the Kaizen lean concept that they're able to produce the quality and to be productive. These businesses focus on Kaizen to bring them a daily continuous improvement. If you look at pictures of these companies that embrace Kaizen, you'll notice that many of their manufacturing floors, they're very clean, calm, minimal, peaceful, yet their productivity is through the roof, which is exactly what I'm looking for. Kaizen is an extension of Marie's method there are five main tenets of Kaizen, also called the five S's. Sort, which means to go through all of your items and remove any unnecessary items from the location. 
This is akin to Marie Kondo telling us to put all the clothes in one place and pick up each piece and ask ourselves, does this spark joy? Set in order, put all the items in their optimal place so that they can fulfill their function. Marie tells us to fold our clothes in a very particular way so that we can put them away easily. And it's very orderly and Pinterest worthy. And this is where Marie's method stops. The third S is shine, which means to clean and inspect items for any defects. To standardize, which means to establish rules and schedules in order to ensure that the first three S's are taken care of. The fifth S is to sustain and self-discipline. This means being able to do something without being told. What if some angel wants to come to your house and do your laundry and fold your clothes and put them all away? Would they know how to do that without you telling them? Enter Paul Akers, a Kaizen lean fanatic. He's also a businessman and he literally wrote the book on the two second improvement. He also uploaded it to YouTube so that you can listen to his audiobook for free. I'm going to include a link to his book in my description box below. Paul asks his readers to focus on waste and to get rid of it. He tells us to make an improvement every day. How can you save two seconds each day? He tells us to fix what bugs us. And although he does gear this toward businesses, I think that this can help us in our busyness. Getting rid of those wastes, and not this kind of waste, can be easy and transform our lives to give us more time to do the things that we love. These are the eight wastes. And here are some examples as they apply to the home. Overproduction. Are we making more trash than we need? Do we have too much laundry? Are we buying too much food? Overprocessing. This is all that extra effort and steps that we put in that doesn't get us to our goal. Say, for example, our clothes are not sorted and organized from our dirty clothes. It could very well be that the next time we do laundry, we are washing clean clothes, and this is a waste. Excess inventory. This is a waste for many reasons. We have to store stuff, maintain them, manage them. It can make things really hard to find because we have too much. We have to store it, and sometimes they can even expire or go bad. Defects. This is something that has gone wrong and needs to be reworked, and it almost always results in something being thrown away or extra work being put in to fix it. An example of a defect would be cooking food at a too high temperature and having it burn so that it's inedible. Transportation. This is the act of moving things by machine or even with our bare hands. That's not actually progressing us to our goal. Maybe we're carrying more than we need to, or we're driving to the grocery store way more than we need to. Wasted motion. This is about human motion, and if you think about it, much of what we do is wasted motion because they're not directly related to the goal that we have in mind. Say your goal is to make a cup of coffee or tea. You walk around your kitchen 10 times just to get the equipment to make your coffee, but that walking doesn't actually make your coffee. So we have to ask ourselves, are we searching for tools and walking too much in order to accomplish our goals? Or maybe we're just spending a lot of time searching for things and shuffling things around in our kitchen in order to find all of the equipment that we need. Waiting time. Are we sitting idle waiting for something to happen and, and just not being productive at all? If something is waiting, that means something is not right in the system. An unused employee genius. This, in my opinion, is the worst waste of all. A brain really is a terrible thing to waste. So we have to ask ourselves these questions. Are they being valued? Are their skills being used to their full potential? To me, this idea that you can improve something by two seconds, it's really an accessible, easy thing to do on a daily basis. And since embracing this concept of the two second improvement, I found that I am so much more productive. This is a prime candidate for a two second fix. I know it seems silly, but I do have this cabinet that I open very slowly every day, multiple times a day. And the reason I do this is because there are some measuring spoons hanging that make an awful clanging noise whenever you open or close it too quickly. On average, it takes 15 seconds to open and close this cabinet. Doing this three times a day and my son does it one time a day, it doesn't seem like a lot of time, but when you look at it over the course of a year, I'm spending four and a half hours opening that
door while my son is spending one and a half hours. The saddest thing about this is we can't get this time back and we'd rather be spending it doing other value added things to our lives. This concept that huge businesses embrace can easily work its way into our home and really improve the quality of our lives. Over the next seven days, I'm going to be posting some short videos outlining some of our two second improvements. These will be short videos. They may be vlog style, they may be edited, it really depends on the amount of time that I have. But they will outline some of the improvements that we make around our house, just fixing things that bug us. Really going through those five S's, sorting, setting things in order, sweeping, shining, standardizing, and sustaining. And I'm going to limit it to roughly 30 minutes a day. These will be working days or weekend days. And I'll also make it a point to not spend any money. I will only be using things that I have around the house or that I can get for free. The improvements will be just a matter of my time, energy, and ingenuity to make these small improvements that will make a huge impact on our lives. I hope that you'll join me in this journey to fix what bugs you, to improve the quality of your life for very little money and to live well with less. To improve is to change. To be perfect is to change often. Winston Churchill. In much of what I do, I do strive for perfection. So I guess that means I'll have to change often. And I hope you'll change along with me. As always, I thank you for your time and I wish you happy kaizening. Bye. Fix what bugs you.